All right, so as you can see, I've got all the electronics set up here and I've added a brand new servo since the last video. I've been meaning to get that one for a while. Um, it's gonna be perfect for steering the car. It's much more powerful. Um, the only downside is it uses more power, which will drain the battery faster. But you do need a decent servo if you're gonna steer properly. And I've also added a, another rear motor, which obviously we will need um, since each of the wheels on my car are gonna be independently driven. And I can show you that working, so if you switch this on, you can see now that as I throttle up, they both move, and as we reach the max, we hit full speed. I've also got reverse working now too, so if I throttle down and go backwards, you can see we're going the opposite way. So we return to the neutral point, it stops, and I can show you as well the servo. So if we go left, go right. And you can see that's working quite smoothly, really nice. And that's basically it, that's most of the electronics that we're going to need. There are other things I want to add in the future, like um, encoders with the whole effect sensors, um, a couple of other things. But I can add to this as we go, you know, and that's the beauty of using these development boards. You've got so much I.O. to use, and you can add and remove things as you please. So the next thing I want to show you is the calibration code that I've created for the transmitter. So it's a nice little routine that I run as soon as the car is booted up, as soon as the board boots. Basically what it does is it captures the minimum and maximum values of the sticks. So the problem you have on an embedded system with something like this is we're reading the values from the sticks through this receiver. And you know each time you run it the minimum and maximum values that you get from a receiver tend to change slightly. So if you if you read them and then hard code them in, you're always going to run into problems when creating your um, power output for the motors and calculating your angle for the servo. So what I do is on startup, I've got a routine that pretty much expects you to move the sticks up and down and left to right. And in that time, I'm capturing the values being read from the transmitter. So the transmitter is sending them to the receiver. I'm reading the values using input capture direct on the chip. And those values are being stored and used to calculate the ratios for these. So I'll show you it running. So if I switch it on, I'm going to reset the board using this black button here. And all you have to do is just move them up and down, and left to right. And that calibrates them for you. You can see now, I'm at the zero position again. If I go forward, we hit maximum speed at the maximum point of the stick, right? and that's important. Because you don't want to hit maximum speed sort of halfway up, and that's the issue, and that's why you need to calibrate. So if we come back down, the same thing for reverse. We hit max speed at the maximum point at the bottom here. And that is why calibration is a must, really, especially if you're doing your own board. Usually if you're using an ESC and you're plugging directly into these, it just kind of handles it for you. But when you're doing your own system, you need to handle that kind of stuff. And the same goes for the servo, so I can go right and left as well. And that works quite nicely. So that's basically it for the electronics. Most of it is done, it's working, I'm really happy with it. As I said, there may be a hiccup or two with the power stuff. We'll get to that when it comes. But now it's pretty much all about design and getting this onto a chassis so we can test it. So that brings me on to the CAD stuff that I've been working on. So let's go take a look. So before I actually started modeling anything in CAD, I wanted to kind of mock up some kind of design as to how I wanted the car to look. And this is just a little time lapse of me creating something just off the top of my head, you know, with the parts I've got and just to get a gauge of how big this thing's going to be and how much print area I'm going to need and just those kind of questions that were on my mind. All right, so one of the first things I did was I modeled as many of the components as possible. And you can see here, if I rotate around, I've pretty much got everything I need, aside from the circuits and things like that. But I've got both the motors, the brackets, the four wheels, the servo, and I modeled all these from scratch using um, just the digital micrometer and kind of measuring everything up. And you can see here down the left, I've got all the components individually. So I modeled a battery, um, a battery pack. And just for example, if I double click the wheel here, this will open a new window. And you can see I designed everything individually. 
and this is a great way to break up your designs and make it quite modular so you know you're not having to redesign stuff all the time you can just import all these as an individual component so these are a set of off-the-shelf wheels that you can buy just for RC cars and basically I wanted to model these in CAD so I could build the whole car and make sure everything was to scale so what I did was I stripped it down and you basically get left with a plastic wheel rim like this one and I decided to model this, I measured everything up using a digital micrometer like this one and if you're into CAD I highly recommend you get one of these, I'll leave a link below if you're interested but I was able to measure that up and uh, I decided to print one and you saw the model earlier on and I decided to print one off and that's basically what it came out like and I'm super pleased with that you know the scale is perfect there's absolutely nothing wrong with it at all I've connected it up to a motor it holds well you know I even modeled a bit in there where the coupler goes so you can see that and it stays in there really really nice and I, I actually printed this in PTG and it turned out surprisingly strong I'd say it's actually stronger than the original um, it doesn't quite look as nice obviously this was a draft print so it's not going to look too pleasing but it was more sort of a test to see how the scale was and to see if I was on the right track in terms of the CAD pleased to say it is all on the right track and the design is looking like it's going to be awesome so after modeling all the components I was able to come up with this really simple um, prototype chassis and as I said before you know it's going to be a simple design to start with it's a rigid body there's no suspension nothing crazy like that I literally just want to test out the electronics in the real world and as I said before there might be some issues with the power delivery for the servo and we won't be able to tell those things until we actually test it you know how it drives how it steers and until there are actually forces applying on all the components you just don't know so the first thing I just want to do is get everything mounted um, get it tested and from there then I can start creating an advanced chassis where I can add suspension and encoders and all that awesome stuff but you know this took quite a while and I'm quite happy with how it's turned out so far so I've been using joints as well so if we zoom into the wheel I can grab that and spin it for example and if you zoom into the coupler as well you can see that spinning in there and you know the main goal for this was just to gain some experience as well um, building something quite complicated really in Fusion 360 um, I managed to get these boards here I, I got the STM32 from GrabCAD and I also got the L298N from GrabCAD this is the receiver here and I modeled that myself um, just just to sort of get a scale really so I can mount it to the to the chassis um, the battery pack I also modeled myself so if I show you here in my components this took quite a while to make and I've done it in a way that you know I can insert the terminals at each side and I've ran holes as well through here so I can do the wiring and there's a little hole on this side where both the wires come out and that's where they're going to meet um, this board here so you can see the hole up here and I've also left at the back so you can see here's the motors at the back I left a little hole as well for the wires of the motor to run through and they come out here underneath the battery pack and they'll just go straight into the H-bridge but you know I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out um, the servo you can see I can steer that as well hopefully you know I'll be able to model the whole thing with the steering system as well and all that will animate too but one of the issues I've come across is obviously the size of the car so my I've only got the Prusa uh, Mark 3S and the heat bed obviously has a limited printable area so I'm gonna to have to build the car in two parts so you can see that's why I've got this split here and if I just show you if I hide the front part um, you can see in here I've left a, a sort of gap and that goes backwards into the rear part of the chassis and then on the front of this part we've got a sort of insert and what I'm hoping to do is just sort of super glue it I've never tried doing anything like this before it may go horribly wrong I really don't know but I'm pretty confident that super glue will hold this stuff together really well as I said it's experimental uh, if you've tried it and you don't recommend it or whatever let me know below and I'll change my design but 
you know, this is for me just gaining a lot of experience. Um, 3D modeling, something quite complicated, and also printing something quite complicated, right, and, and building it. Worth keeping in mind as well that the design of this is, you know, going to be constantly changing and improving, and that's all stuff to look forward to. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you again in part four.